William Warelvast was a medieval Norman cleric and Bishop of Exeter in England. Warelvast was a native of Normandy, but little is known about his background before 1087, when he appears as a royal clerk for King William II. Most of his royal service to William was as a diplomatic envoy. As he was heavily involved in the king's dispute with Anselm, the Archbishop of Canterbury, which constituted the English theatre of the investiture controversy. He went several times to Rome as an emissary to the papacy on business related to Anselm, one of whose supporters, the medieval chronicler Edmer, alleged that Warelvast bribed the Pope and the papal officials to secure favourable outcomes for King William. Possibly present at King William's death in a hunting accident, Warelvast served as a diplomat to the king's successor, Henry I. After the resolution of the investiture controversy, Warelvast was rewarded with the bishopric of Exeter in Devon, but he continued to serve Henry as a diplomat and royal judge. He began the construction of a new cathedral at Exeter, and he probably divided the diocese into archdeaconries. Warelvast went blind after 1120, and after his death in 1137 was succeeded by his nephew, Robert Warelvast. Little is known of Warelvast's background or family before 1087. Later in life he was involved in founding Augustinian Houses of Canons, which, according to historian D. W. Blake, implies that he was an Augustinian canon or spent some of his early years in a house of such canons. Several medieval chroniclers hostile to Warelvast, including Edmer, claim that he was illiterate, but his career suggests otherwise, as it involved the extensive use of written documents. He must also have been an accomplished speaker, given the number of times he was used as a diplomat. He was possibly educated at Lawn, where later in life he sent his nephew, Robert Warelvast, to school. Another nephew, William, became the bishop's steward. Warelvast may have been a clerk for King William I of England, as a confirmation charter from the time of King Stephen records that a grant of churches in Exeter was given to Warelvast by Willemus, Avis Mayus. Or William, my grandfather slash ancestor, Stephen was a grandson of William I, who reigned 1066 to 1087. But this charter may be a forgery, or the Willemus referred to may have been William II rather than William I. The charter itself is insufficient evidence to confidently assert that Warelvast served William I even though most such grants were made as a reward for royal service. It may have been that Warelvast was awarded land by William I not because he was a royal servant but because he was a relative, certainly the late medieval writer William Worcester claimed that Warelvast was related to the king. The first reliable mentions of Warelvast occur early in the reign of King William II, when Warelvast appears as authorizing writs for the king. As well as being a royal clerk, Warelvast acted as a judge in a legal case between St. Florent Abbey and Saumur and Facom Abbey, heard before King William II some time between 1094 and 1099 at Foucarmont. Warelvast served the king as an envoy to Pope Urban II in 1095, when the king was seeking to have the newly appointed Archbishop of Canterbury, Anselm of Canterbury, removed from office. He visited the Pope with another royal clerk, Gerard, with orders to recognize Urban as Pope in return for Anselm's deposition, at least according to Edmer, an Anselm partisan. The two clerks traveled very quickly as they did not leave before February 28, 1095 and were back in England by May 13, 1095. Edmer claimed that the ambassadors were supposed to acquire a pallium, the symbol of an archbishop's authority, for the king to give to his new choice as archbishop. But although the king may have instructed his envoys to attempt to secure these objects, he was probably willing to negotiate and to settle for less. The two clerks returned with a papal legate, Walter of Albano, who accepted the king's recognition of Urban but refused to allow Anselm's deposition. The king did nevertheless manage to secure a recognition of his royal rights in the church, and a concession that no papal legates or communications would be sent without his approval. It may well be that the king always regarded Anselm's deposition as unlikely. Warelvast was probably sent as an envoy to Urban in 1096 to bribe the Pope into recalling the papal legate Geronto, who had been sent to England to protest the king's conduct towards the church. In addition to his ambassadorial duties Warelvast acted as a royal justice under King William, the records of one case have survived. Shortly before Anselm went into exile in 1097 Warelvast searched his baggage, probably looking for communications to the Pope, either from Anselm or other English bishops rather than for valuables, and in particular for any letters of complaint. Warelvast was the king's envoy at Rome when during his exile Anselm petitioned to have the king excommunicated, which according to Edmer, who was also present, 
War Elvas succeeded in preventing by bribing the Pope and papal officials. The king had sent War Elvas to Urban at Christmas 1098, with his reply to a letter the Pope had written ordering the restoration of Anselm's estates. King Henry's dream from a 12th century manuscript of the Chronic and X Chronicus of John of Worcester War Elvast may have been with the hunting party on August 2, 1100, in which King William was accidentally killed. As he was one of the witnesses to the letter sent on August 5, 1100, from William II's brother, the new King Henry I to Anselm recalling the Archbishop. King Henry continued to use War Elvast as an ambassador, sending him to Rome in 1101 to bring back Pope Pascal II's reply to a letter written by Henry immediately after his accession. Henry was seeking a reconciliation with the papacy, and confirmed to the Pope the rights and obedience which his father had rendered, but he also requested the same rights within the Church as his father had enjoyed. Chiefly the lay investiture of bishops and the granting of the symbols of episcopal authority by laymen. Pascal declined to grant Henry those rights. It was Worlvast who told Anselm in 1103 that the king would not permit his return to England. This came after a failed joint mission by Worlvast and Anselm to Pascal attempting to resolve the dispute between Henry and the Archbishop over the king's investiture of bishops, a dispute generally known as the investiture controversy. It is quite likely that the king had given instructions that if the mission failed, Worlvast was to inform Anselm that he should only to return to England if he agreed with the king's position in the dispute. In 1106 War Elvast was the king's negotiator in the discussions that led to the settlement of the investiture controversy in England. The king ultimately lost little, relinquishing the right to give the actual symbols of episcopal authority to a newly elected bishop in return for continuing to receive homage from the bishops. Early in 1106 War Elvast was sent to Beck Abbey, where Anselm was residing in exile, to inform him of the settlement and deliver to the archbishop the king's invitation to return to England. In May 1107 War Elvast acted as the king's envoy at Pascal's council at Tra, where Pascal was attempting to secure support for Beaumont of Antioch's proposed campaign against Byzantium. War Elvast probably relayed to the Pope the news that King Henry would make no contribution to Beaumont's efforts. Henry had reserved the Episcopal See of Exeter for War Elvast since the death of Osborne Fitz Osborne in 1103, but the controversy over investiture meant that his election and consecration were not possible before a settlement was reached. Instead the king gave War Elvast the office of Archdeacon of Exeter after Osborne's death. The medieval chronicler William of Malmesbury records that War Elvast had earlier tried to remove Osborne from office, but this story probably originates with Edmer and is of dubious veracity. While Archdeacon, War Elvast is recorded as being present at the transfer of a Devon church to Bath Cathedral. He was elected Bishop of Exeter, and was consecrated on August 11, 1107, by Anselm at the Royal Palace of Westminster. Other bishops consecrated at the same time included William Giffard to Winchester, Roger of Salisbury to Salisbury, Renelm to Hereford, and Urban to Landaff. War Elvast's elevation was a reward for his diplomatic efforts in the investiture crisis. The mass consecration signaled the end of the investiture crisis in England. After his consecration War Elvast continued to serve the king, often appearing on documents or in accounts of the royal court. The bishop served the king as a messenger, once more carrying messages to Anselm in 1108. He also served as a royal judge, hearing a case at Tamworth in 1114 and another at Westbourne the same year. He was with the king in Normandy in 1111, 1113, and 1118, and may have been in Normandy more frequently. During Henry's reign War Elvast was a witness to twenty of the king's charters. In 1115 Henry sent Worrell Vast back to Rome to negotiate with Pascal, who was angry that the king was prohibiting papal legates in England, not allowing clerics to appeal to the papal court, and was failing to secure papal sanction for church councils or the translation of bishops. Worrell Vast was unable to change the Pope's mind, but he did manage to prevent sanctions against the king. Henry also employed Worrell Vast as a papal envoy during the Canterbury-York disputes over the primacy in the English Church, with visits in 1119, 1120, and possibly also in 1116. One of the transept towers at Exeter Cathedral, which date from War Elvast's time as a bishop, War Elvast attended the Council of Reims in 1119 along with three other bishops from England, as well as the Council of Rouen in 1118, a provincial synod for Normandy. In his Diocese of Exeter he began the construction of a new cathedral in about 1114, it was consecrated in 1133. The existing two towers in the transepts date from that period. 
He also replaced the secular clergy staffing collegiate churches with regular canons, at Plimpton in 1121 with canons from Aldgate in London, and in 1127 at the church in Lounston in Cornwall. In addition he founded a house of regular canons at Bodmin. Royal charter survived that granted several churches in Cornwall, Devon, and Exeter to Warlvast. Warlvast's relations with his cathedral chapter were good, and no disputes arose during his episcopate. It was not until late in his bishopric that the diocese was split into multiple archdeaconries, which appears to have happened in 1133. Warlvast instituted the two offices of treasurer and presenter for the cathedral chapter, as well as the first sub-archdeacons, who were under the archdeacons. Subarchdeacons are not attested again at Exeter until the episcopate of Bartholomew Iscanus, who was bishop from 1161 to 1184. William of Malmesbury felt that during Warlvast's episcopate the cathedral chapter relaxed its communal living, which previously had been strong. It is likely that during Warlvast's episcopate the canons of the cathedral chapter quit living in a communal dormitory. Warlvast went blind in his later years, starting in about 1120 which William of Malmesbury regarded as a fitting punishment for Warlvast's alleged attempts to remove his predecessor from office early. He died about September 26, 1137, and was buried in the priory at Plimpton. He may have resigned his see prior to his death. The 16th-century antiquary John Leland thought that Warlvast resigned his see before 1127, became a canon at Plimpton, and died in 1127. Although Leland's year of death is incorrect, it is possible that Warl Vast became a canon shortly before his death. The Annal Plimptonienses records that Robert of Bath, the Bishop of Bath, gave Warl Vast his last rites on September 26, 1137, and records that the dying bishop was made a member of the Collegiate Church at Plimpton. Warl Vast's nephew Robert Warl Vast succeeded as bishop at Exeter in 1138. Robert had been appointed Archdeacon of Exeter by his uncle. The historian C. Warren Hollister described William Warlvast as a canny and devoted royal servant. Thanks for watching.